Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning also to the brothers and sisters that are connected on Zoom, also to the friends. And again, thank you so much to the elders, the deacons, and to the whole congregation for this opportunity. Also, thank you so much to the Lord Jesus for this privilege uh, that he gave me to be talking about him this morning. This morning we're gonna be we're gonna be talking about the book of Luke, chapter 18, beginning with the verse 31 through verse 43. That's what gonna our lesson is gonna be. And the name of this lesson is Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And in the first line, the introduction. We're going we're gonna to be seeing that Jesus Christ invite and told to his friend or to his um, apostle or disciples, we should go to Jerusalem. We should go up to Jerusalem. We should go up over there. It, 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 this is amazing, these words, because Jesus is saying to his friend that it's necessary to go up to Jerusalem to die. Sometimes we are thinking, uh, we are thinking or we are saying to our friend, friend, let's go, for example, to the movies, to the theaters, or let's go to the park, because over there we are going to have joy, we're going to have party. We're going to be um, a good time over there. But Jesus is not saying that to his apostles. He's saying it's necessary or we should go up to Jerusalem to die because I'm going to go to die over there. Uh, we have maybe some problem with the technology, but don't worry. We continue with the, with the class. That's no problem. The, the, like brother, brother, well, we got the title now. Like Brother Rex says, I remember this word always, so the Brother Rex, the Lord never stopped. Yeah, never stopped. And that's very wise words because the pandemic is not stopping the preaching of the gospel. Uh, the pandemic is not uh, stopping his church, his kingdom. His kingdom continues spreading the word. And we are going to continue day after day, praising and glorifying our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? So Jesus Christ, like I was saying, is telling to his apostles, let's go. Let's go to Jerusalem. Let's go up over there to get torture over there. And after that, to be crucified. And we're going to see that Jesus tells to his disciples, it's necessary to go over there. Let's to go up to Jerusalem, Luke chapter 18, verse 31 through 34, said to us that. And then he said to them, to, 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 to his disciples, uh, in his way over there, he's going to meet a blind beggar near Jericho. Jericho was before in his way going up to Jerusalem. And over there, he met not only a blind man, but his blind man was also a beggar, maybe for his physical disease or his physical problem. It, is, it wasn't so hard for him to get a job in that time. Now we are living, thanks to the Lord, in a different time. There are a school for, for blinds, they are also, we see dogs, a school of dogs that this school are training the dogs and these dogs are leading the blinds in the way. We're living in, in a blessing times now. We got many things. And in this country, brothers and sisters, we got many, many beautiful blessings of the Lord. We are enjoying many blessings. And but at this time, it was different. It was so hard. 
But in his way, the Lord Jesus met this man. Thank you so much, Brother Derek, for making my, my class easier. And this encounter was not random. It wasn't a random encounter. Uh, we are not lucky person. We are blessing persons. People outside, people without Christ, before that we were without Christ, we were thinking and talking in that way. Oh, what a good lot. And people is buying lottery because so many millions in the lottery. Oh, I, I hope to get a good lot and to win. To win the lottery. Sometimes I told to my wife, we don't need to get to win the lottery. We need to work hard and to pray to the Lord and he's going to be blessing us. That's enough. That's more than enough. We're going to probably people won millions or win millions of dollars, but also win millions of problems. See, the same thing. So we have to be satisfied with the things that the Lord is giving to us. So this encounter, it was a, it was no random encounter. Jesus know that. Jesus is knowing that we are here. But he's not forcing us, like the brother were praying, thanks Lord, because we got the ability to wake up this morning to let the bell and come to the building. But he's not forcing us to encounter with him this morning. We decide this one. He's telling us, do it. But he's not forcing to nobody. He not forced to this man to be over there in that way. He was over there, and Jesus knew that. Okay, but in my way, I'm gonna meet this man. It was another opportunity for the Lord to reach another soul on his way to Calvary. This is amazing. On the cross, he saved another man. In his way, he's saving another man. Or mentality. It has to be the same as Jesus' mentality. To be talking to people, people sometimes he say, I don't want to know about that. I don't want to hear you. Okay? Let's leave that person. Let's find another one. Let's continue. Don't be disappointed. Let's continue talking and spreading his word. What was the condition of this man? He was blind. It could be an excuse. I'm blind. I can see the Lord. And I don't know how to read. For, for, for you, maybe this is, this is weird. People that doesn't know to read in, in, in Mexico, Central America, in South America, many people that they don't know how to read. But even that's no excuse to know Jesus Christ. It was a blind, it was an excuse to know Jesus Christ. Anyway, he wants to know Jesus Christ. His condition, he was a blind, he couldn't see the light. We got a great privilege every day. We open our eyes in the morning, we close the eyes at night when we go to sleep, and we open the eyes again, and we are blessing. Blessed because we can see the lie again. This man, he couldn't see the lie. He stumbled on his way, crouching with the rock, getting on the horse. No good streets on that time, on, the, on that place in that time. Not like this street. Horse, he was a stumble on his way. Others had to lead him by hand. He doesn't have a dog to be leading him. Other person, maybe 
his relatives leaving him. Leave. He didn't, he did, he didn't have a, a, a job. We are tired every day. I told Charles and brother uh, uh, Kennedy right now, some minutes ago, I had a long way working too hard. He didn't have a job. How to live if you don't have a job? He lived on the arms of the world, begging in the way. Oh, this is a good way. People is passing through here, and maybe some good Samaritan or good people pass by and give me some money to survive. This is amazing. He was over there. In the next slide, let's see the next slide, please. And we're gonna be, we're gonna be seeing <clears throat> that he was, we're gonna be talking about his condition, or we continue having some, some problems. Okay. This blindness, it was a representation of a spiritual blindness. Those who are spiritual lost are in some sense wandering blindly. Jesus called the Pharisees blind in Matthew chapter 15, verse 14, because this blindness is worse than the physical blindness. This is worse. The Pharisees, they thought that they could see perfectly. But Jesus told them, you are blind. Matthew chapter 15, verse 14. Jesus said, they are blind guys or the blind. If a blind man, guys, a blind man, both will fall into a pit. That's true. Jesus also called their followers blind. The followers of the Pharisees and Sadducees also were blind people. But blind, not physically, blind spiritually. That's worse. When we say that we see perfectly, but we are not able to see this true, we are really blind. We really need glasses. So that was the condition of the Pharisees and Sadducees. What about us? We are Christians. We belong to Jesus Christ. We were also blind once in the past. When we didn't know Jesus Christ, we were blind. The Bible said that Satan does his best to blind the unbelieving. The people, not all people, but specifically the unbelieving people. Because outside we see people that believe in Jesus Christ. They only need to have the opportunity to hear about Jesus Christ. But specifically, specifically, the unbelieving Satan is doing his best to blind those people. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse, verse four. In whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving. That's what the apostle Paul is saying, specifically the unbelieving people so that they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. In other words, the beggar want to see the image of God when he heard the noise that was passing by. 
Let's go to the next lines. In the next line, we see the curiosity of the blind man. In Luke chapter 18, verse 36 and verse 37. After hearing all the noise occurring, he asked what's going on. That was he said in Luke chapter 18, verse 36 and verse 37. He asked, what's going on? This noise of the crowd or this noise of the multitude was different to anything he had heard before. It's a different noise. Remember, he was all the time over there begging. And he heard, he didn't see, but he heard perfectly. And he heard different noises of the crowd, maybe of the Roman soldiers that were passing by. Other people that was going to Jerusalem during the Passover to celebrate the Passover. But this noise was different. Different than the other noise. He concluded that something special was happening. This is different. This is something special. Those around him told him that Jesus or Nazareth was passing by. Jesus or Nazareth, God with us, was passing by. This is amazing. Perhaps you are here out of curiosity. Welcome to the visitor. You are very welcome, honored guests. People that are connected on Zoom with us, they are welcome also. And sometimes people visit to us and they are for curiosity. Oh, I'm going to be over there in the meeting. Uh, Carlos invite me, or, 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 or Todd invite me, or, or the elders invite me, or Derek. Oh, one sister over there, invite me, I'm going to go. Maybe you are wondering about the church. Uh, the men of the congregation this morning, one of them were, was leading the song. We, were, we didn't wear or use instruments to sing to the Lord, to be praising to the Lord. Uh, other men of the congregation was leading the Lord's Supper. He was praying for the bread, and he said, this bread represents the body of Jesus of Nazareth. And this cup represents his blood that was shed for us on the cross. And we are doing this one every first day of the week. And then the same brother was praying for the offering. We are collecting the offering on the first day of the week, every first day of the week. No, every day, according to the Bible, and they read some scriptures to get some evidence that the things that we are doing are commanded by Jesus of Nazareth. Something different. This is the Church of Christ. Maybe you have noticed something different in this place. Maybe you have been visiting or hearing about other congregations, local congregations, and you see, oh, this is different. This is a different way of worship service. Different way. I was talking some, with some people years ago, and when I start to preach them the plan of salvation, one of those people told me, I have never seen this plan of salvation. And I told him, but you got a Bible, you have never seen it, see it or hear it because you don't, you, don't, you don't read the Bible. Or because your guy was a blind guy that has been guiding you for many years. And he said, maybe you're right. 
And I told him, no, no I know maybe right. I'm right because I'm reading the Bible. We got the evidence. When we got the evidence on our hands, we are not maybe right. We are right. 100% right. All the things that we are doing here in this building, are we are doing right things commanded by all God. Commanded by Jesus of Nazareth. So that's the difference that we are seeing right here. That is the importance to be praising the Lord, to continue faithful in this way, because we are going, brothers and sisters, in the right direction. Let's continue focus on this. If we, if, if, if physically we get tired, we only rest and we recover and strength and continue, continue working. It is saying way right here. And spiritually, sometimes we are tired. We are saying, oh, I'm so tired. I'm doing too many things for God. Oh, really? Many things for God? He was going up to Jerusalem to die for us, to die for you and me. We are not doing enough. We are doing sometimes enough for our own lives. Working like crazy to pay bills, to pay rent, to save some money, thinking in the future. But our future is in the hands of Jesus of Nazareth. Remember that. Let's go, let, let's go to the next line, please. The cry, the cry of the blind. Luke chapter 18, verse 38 and verse 39. He start crying. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He recognized Jesus as the Messiah. Other people that were able to see physically, they didn't recognize as Jesus as the Messiah. But this man, without sin, he recognized Jesus as the Messiah because he believes in Jesus in his heart. If we believe in Jesus in our heart, nothing is going to stop to us to continue believing in Jesus. Nothing. He recognized Jesus as the fountain of mercy. I am in need. I can see physically. But this man is so merciful. He's so good. He was now intimidated by others. Other people said, be quiet. When somebody tells you, be quiet, stop believing in Jesus, don't listen. Continue. No one, nobody is going to stop me to continue believing in Jesus Christ. And let's, cr let's cry louder. I believe in him. That's what he was doing. He was not intimidated by others. Be quiet. I'm not going to be I'm gonna, not going to be quiet. I'm going to continue. I'm going to be continue crying. I believe in King. I haven't met him yet. I don't see him. But I believe in him. Have mercy on me. He didn't listen to the other people. Those who led the way were sternly telling him to be quiet. But he kept crying out all the more. That's faith. That's the kind of faith that we also need to have. Let's continue with faith, believing in Jesus. Song of David, have mercy on me. Israel, many Israelites, until this day, they don't recognize Jesus as the Messiah. They are still waiting for the Messiah. But he was recognizing Jesus as the Messiah. He persisted in crying out for an answer. 
That's what Jesus said in his teaching, in his parables. Continue praying. That's what the apostle Paul said. Praying without ceasing until you get an answer of God. Sometimes the Lord is not responding immediately or at the time that we, we want to hear his answer. He's responding on his time. Or sometimes he's saying, no, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to please you with this. Like he responds to the apostle Paul. My grace is sufficient. And he is right all the time. But this blind man, he persists crying out because Jesus, Jesus had an answer, he saying, no, I'm not going to help you. It was the other people. But let's see in the, next, in the next line. We're going to find his conversion. Luke chapter 18, verse 40 to 43. And Jesus stopped and command that he be brought to him. Bring me this, that man that is crying out. And when he came near, he questioned him. What do you want me to do for you? And he said, Lord. I want to regain my sight. And Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. Immediately, he regained his sight and began following him, glorifying God. And when everyone saw it, they gave praise to God. Jesus invited us to come closer. Jesus is telling to us, come close to me. It is up to us to decide what we want He to do for us. He's asking, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus recognized that this man really believed in him. No one stopped him to continue crying out. I want to meet Jesus. I want to meet Jesus. I want to talk with him. I want to hear that he tell me, I'm not going to help you. I'm not going to believe in you that you are saying, be quiet. If we are looking for Jesus with a clean heart and a sincere heart, he's waiting for us. He's going to be with his arm waiting for us. And we're, we're going to be in the next line. In concluding this lesson, that is necessary to believe at this blind. Necessary belief at this sinner deal. It's necessary to confess Jesus uh, just as he did. He confessed Jesus calling him Lord. In other words, he's saying, you are the Messiah. You are God among us. You are the Savior. He wasn't baptized. Remember, he talks directly with Jesus, and Jesus decided to save him. He gave him the favor that he was asking for, that was to see again physically. But he continued following Jesus. Remember, he, Jesus also saved the thief on the cross. But after that he arose, he commanded that it's necessary to be baptized. To be saved. Mark chapter 16. Verse 16. We got water. Right here. 
you need to be baptized for the remission of, of, of our sins, of your sins. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. We see over there the example of almost 3,000 people were baptized in that day. And it's necessary to follow Jesus every day of our life. Continue following as this blind man did. He continued following Jesus and glorifying and praising Jesus. And when the others of the multitude saw this, they also start praising and glorifying God. He was a good example for others. When we come to Christ, we have to be light for others that are in darkness. Thank you so much for your attention, uh, brothers and sisters, and the lesson is yours. Now let's, let's sing the invitation song. <laughs>